Welcome to the Drop Library, where we have Freedom Pies for sale. Oh, we have Freedom Angeladas over here. Get your freedom. Knowledge is power. We have so many more great uh, PDFs for you to, uh, you know, enjoy at your own fair use disposal. Just get suited up. So you can choose it up. We're going to get a little bit out of that uh, OSB. We're going to get back in that just a little tad bit to talk about, uh, you know, they man thought getting to their spell barrier, their frequency. See what time it is. And again, this is a wake up call for all of the family. This is not, you know, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying? This is a frequency war. So if Thoth is telling you that he raised up his staff and put a ray of vibration on you, had you groveling at his feet at his display of magic science and had you frozen like a fragment of stone of the mountain, then it's a frequency war. Then you've been hijacked. And today we're going to get some more, like I said, out of this OSB, OSB. Now, I don't care if it's written by Fallen Angel Hijacks. I mean, shit, most of this shit is, right? But even the angels have to tell the truth because they mix the truth in with lies. And they know that in order to tell an effective lie, they have to put some babies in the bathwater. They always have to include some truth. So being founded being founded on the law of the creator in stone in Los Lunas, New Mexico. Being founded on not killing and not stealing and, you know what I'm saying, rocking with our creator, vibrating with our creator. We can literally, you know, take our time as we carve this turkey open. This jive turkey will be carved open. Real slick like. Alright, yeah man. Get your drop, get your drop, get your drive. Freedom pie, freedom pie. Like I said, we're gonna get this OSB. I'm just gonna jump into a part right here. Let's go. Let go. This is Paige. Oh man, I wanna get into this uh Abraham, Moses, and Poe and Shinye. Chinye. Kabilia. Some cool stuff, man. I mean, what I like about this uh, document is that it's pretty much against all hijacks. I mean, they're taking out Muhammad. They're taking out Christ. They're taking out Brahma, Buddha, anything other than the with who they call Jehovah. We call Heya, Heya, Hawa, Hawa. You know what I mean? So, you know. Yeah, man. Love to smiles, man. You know what I'm saying? She did that. You know, great intro. It always comes in at the perfect time, man. So love to smiles, love to uh, Chris Hall. You know what I mean? But yeah, you know what I'm saying. Look, man, I like it when they're you know against all hijacks. And that's all I know is that when you're against all hijacks, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna see what you got to say if you're talking against the false Christ and the false Buddha and Brahma, this thought frequency, all these fallen gods. So when you see a chapter like this, God chastises it the four false gods separately i'm going to listen what four false gods because we know there are false energies it is a frequency war thoth put you in a slave vibration again we got it right here at the emerald tablets tablet one you look up click on all those links man it takes a long time to get them on there so i hope y'all just pull them all up it might be 10 it might be 12 but dig on it All right, I gave you time, let's go. So yeah, Thoth said he came over here fast. We fled toward the sun of the morning until beneath us lay the land of the children of Kim. So they were new to the land of Kim. Interesting. Thoth, you know, ain't repping Kim. Thoth just rode up on Kim. I mean, am I lying? Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning until beneath us lay 
the land of the children of Kim. He's not saying I'm a child of Kim. He's saying we rolled up on Kim. Raging they came with cudgels and spears. So the indigenous people of Kim saw Thoth in them. The so-called Egyptian Atlantean. You know what I mean? Oh, we, he gave us writing and shit. <laughs> oh, he, he gave us magic science. Well, how did he put the magic science on you? Why are you craving magic sciences today? I'm not talking about Enoch science. I'm not talking about the essence of really, you know, comprehending the vibration. I'm talking about his version, his twist, his order on his magic science. See, these angels taught their own order to it. So it wasn't that this science is evil. It's the order it's being presented in. If they have you out of order, they can still put the same ingredients, but put them out of order and get a different organism, a different vibration. So it wasn't like the creator is trying to keep these things away from his children, but you don't give your children a gun to play with. You don't give your children acid and say, hey, here's a can of acid. Or more realistically, you don't give a five-year-old, you know what I'm saying, you know, whiskey. You don't give a five-year-old whiskey. I mean, you know, I mean, I know, I know they used to put some in the, you know, on the top of the little bottle to make you go to sleep. You know, I, I get, you know, you, know you, you, you feel me, man. Don't act like you don't. So we got to choose up. If you won't give a five-year-old whiskey, then... It's not, is it the fire water or is it how it's being ordered and how it's being presented? Is it the this or is it the order? Is it the abuse? Are you getting all the drop of it? All right, so. Raging, they came with us. They came with cudgels and spears. So you came at him with weapons of war. Lifted in anger, seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. Then I raised my staff and I directed a ray of vibration. So with this staff of Thoth, he directed a ray of vibration. Just meditate on that. A ray of vibration is coming from his staff at the indigenous people of Kim. So my brother of comedic science today, were you comedic science before you got hit with this direct ray of vibration? Now, what did this ray of vibration do to you, my brother? And I do love you because I wouldn't take the time. Then raised I my staff and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain. So you turn, you got turned into stone. Now, is that productive, my brother? Did Thoth hit you with a frequency of productivity? Or did he put you in a trance? And what did he do when you were in that trance turned into stone? Then spoke I to them in words calm and peaceful. Abracadabra, motherfucker. Telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun and its messengers. So why would you have to turn someone into stone and start whispering how great you are and that you are this and you are that, if it is really true. I mean, if you're really mighty, is there a better way to show me than turning me into stone and hypnotizing me? And how do I know you are hypnotizing us? Because it says right here in Thoth Emerald Tablets, Tablet 1. Cowed I them, cowed I them. He had you cowed, coward. Cowed I them by my display of magic science. Now you're going to hear the word magic, even Moorish magic. 
You're even going to hear Moorish magic being brought out. We're going to get into that spirit science a little bit, like I told you, because we're going to get into their science, their magic, their thought, their rate of vibration, man. All right? This is just the intro. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Now we get into it, man. So let's go. Let me get into some more of that Prince Uriel Bay. We just want to, you know, uh, flood some water through this, uh, this tunnel here, man. You know what I'm saying? We want to get that pure water flowing out there so we can all have a comprehension. Alright, so cowed I then by my display of magic science until at my feet they groveled when I released them. So you were groveling at his feet, my brother. Are you still groveling at Thoth's feet? Oh, he released you? Or are you still under his spell? Cowed I then by my display of magic science. You got hit with a ray of vibration, yo. So what does it say right here? Page, uh, what's this, 59? 58. God chastises the four false gods separately. They say in Jehovah, you know, we hey ya, hey ya, hawa, existence, establishment. In Hawa's name. Greeting unto thee, Louis Ma. Thou hast a warrior angel, Thoth. Right? So thou hast a warrior angel, Thoth. So Louis Ma has a warrior angel named Thoth. So Thoth is a sub angel under Louis Ma, who is also called the false Christ. Which is why Christianity and Islam can be merged into Chrislam. Because it's the same energy. Whether they break the male off this way and the female off this way. Remember, Baal and Astra still rock together. That's their male and female. That's that Isis element. So, Louis Mong, thou has a warrior angel, Thoth, alias Gabriel. Who labored for thee more than a thousand years in order to make thee under thy false names worshipful on earth. And thou didst promise Thoth that when he overcame Dagon, Asherith, and Baal. So you, so you made some promises, big homie. You made promises to Thoth that when he overtook Dagon, Dogon, Asherith, Baal, Bel, Belus. Remember the Belus, the Baal. We're still talking about, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're still talking about the Moabite, man. All right. We're talking about the Moabite and other false gods. Thou wouldst give to him a heavenly sub kingdom with a thousand million subjects. So he wanted his own celestial situation underneath the firmament. Remember, he has to run from the hounds of the barrier. Let me go back to Emerald Tablet. You can go to Chapter 8 or Tablet 8 and you'll read about Thoth running from the Hounds of the Barrier in circles with little known angles because the Hounds of the Barrier only move in angles. The angels move in angles. And Thoth did accomplish and, and Thoth, Thoth did thus accomplish thy desire but thou didst not give him anything, but thou didst further exact of him the destroying of idol worship among mortals and the destroying of oracle temples for consulting spirits, re-promising him that when he had fulfilled these things, thou wouldst give him unto him the promised heavenly kingdom. And Thoth did accomplish these things also. Listen up. And Thoth did accomplish these things also. But thou didst refuse again to fulfill thy promise, whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present heavenly dominions, inspiring his followers under the name Muhammad. Is it play play? Whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present heavenly dominions, inspiring his followers under the name Muhammad. 
And now, behold, thou hast since that day tried to destroy him in heaven and on earth, but Thoth was anchored in earthly possessions in Jerusalem and Tethys and Egypt. So Thoth through Muhammad had already conquered Jerusalem and wherever Tethys is and Egypt. Thoth was all over the place. That's why they, oh, Muslim Jerusalem. We all need Jerusalem. And Egypt, Atlantis, right? So Thoth is Muhammad, according to this source. Don't go against me. Go against the OSB. <laughs> all right. So we're just pulling it all together now. All you got to do, you know, this is a little. I just went to Hermes Tristes. Hermes Tris, Trismegistus. That's Thoth. Hermes Trismegistus may be a representation of syncretic, syncretic, syncretinism, syncretic combination of Greek god Hermes and Egyptian god Thoth, which are one and the same. Greeks in Hellenistic Egypt recognize the equivalence of Hermes and Thoth. Consequently, the two gods are worshipped as one in what has been the temple of Thoth in Camnu, which the Greeks call Hermopolis. Hermopolis. All right. Islamic tradition. Saeed Ahmed Amaruddin has pointed out that Hermes Trigmegistus has a major place in Islamic tradition. He writes Hermes Trigmegistus. Thoth is mentioned in the Quran in verse 19, 56 through 57, mentioned in the book Idris that he was truthful, a prophet. So Thoth is a prophet in the Quran. We're not making this stuff up when we say Thoth is Muhammad. Thoth is Thut Moses the third. Thut Moses, born of Thoth. If you're Thut Moses, you're born of Thoth. Remember the Thoth Amon spell barrier, right? So what ray of vibration has you groveling? at this energy today where you fight your own brother and accept this energy you fight your own brother and accept christmas you accept pyramids over your brother and your sacred trees why because of thought and his grid what grid the axis conscious grid the axis conscious grid oh okay keep it in mind So Hermes Trismegistus is mentioned in the Quran in verse 19, 56 to 57 in the book Idris, that he was truthful, a prophet. We took him up to a high place. The Jabarian corpus contains the oldest documented source for the emerald tablet of Hermes Trismegistus. Trismegistus. Thoth. So this emerald tablet that we already reading in. All right, praise the creator. We already got it. Translated, all right. So, man. So this uh, these writings were recorded by Iqwan al-Safa and subsequently translated from Arabic into Persian, Turkish, Hebrew, Russian, and English. In these writings, Hermes Trig Trigmegistus is identified as Idris, the infallible prophet who traveled to outer space from Egypt and to heaven. Whence he brought back Adam and the black stone when he landed on earth in India. That's your black stone. That's your, you know what I'm saying? What's the Kaaba, you know, whatever you, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. The big black stone. And then you connect that to Saturn quite easily. So according to Arab genealogist Muhammad the prophet, who is also believed to have traveled to heavens on the night of Isra something in Mirage Mirage is a direct descendant of Hermes Trismegistus. Wait. Now this is Wikipedia. I know, I know, who cares? But we just got the same thing out the OSB. Wait a minute. Just just stop right there. Whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present heavenly dominions, inspiring his followers under the name Muhammad. 
according to the ancient Arab genealogist Muhammad the prophet, who is also believed to have traveled to heavens on the night of Isra and Miraj, is a direct descendant of Hermes Trigmegistus. Thought. So either he's Thoth or a descendant of Thoth, born of Thoth, Thut Moses. Get it? The crescent moon in Egypt, the crescent moon in, in Islam. Get it? So our more, more Moabite, Moabite Baal family, Baal family, rocking the Thoth frequency Islam, right? Was Prester John, was King David rocking that? Was your priest king rocking that? Ah, uh, don't oh snap Preston John. You know he's always relevant. You know no one wants to discuss Preston John. Priest King, Lebna Dangle Dewey, Raja here, Raja the second, Chola. Nobody wants to talk David Soslin. No one wants to talk Preston John. The last noble image of the Negro according to Ronald Sanders in the Lost Tribes and Promised Land, which we will get back into part 25 coming right up. We're just discussing Moab. The history of the Moab, Moabites at the time of the Hebrew invasion. The Moabites seem to have been so powerful. All that conflict was within was avoided. Uh, although the Israelites defeated a and slew Sahan, the Amorite king. So there was war between these Hebrews and the Moabites. There was war between the priest king, King David, and the Moabites. All right. All right. All right. I mean, we're just talking to OSB. Now you skip way ahead to page 768. Way ahead to page 768. You know, and you get a lot about, you know, which gods of these are being worshipped. And what's happening when this worship is complete. You see, according to this source, this worship must be complete for these gods to be released. These guys want to be released, but they are not being released so easily until the worship is complete. They are not being released until the worship is complete. It says Jehovah judges the false gods and the goddesses. Turn to 768. It says, S said, the voice spake out of the light over the throne of God, saying, Because I admonish both earth and heaven, saying, Who setteth up more than who setteth up more than the I am shall be bound. And whosoever hearken unto them and runneth after them. So when I tell my brothers I love you, man. Because it's a frequency war, I don't want you on the spell. You think we we crazy, but that's cool. But we're only rocking with the creator here. We're only rocking with the creator. And we want to make sure we're all rocking in the same frequency. Period. No spell allowed. No hijack allowed. <laughs> who setteth up more than the I am shall be bound. And who hearketh unto them and runneth after them shall be bound unto them. And they heeded not my commandments, but made worship, but worship other gods than me. So shall they reap the harvest they have sown, because they drew the sword to establish themselves. They were bound by the sword, because they took up themselves heavenly kingdoms. I bound them thereunto, because they professed salvation in the names of false gods. I let them run their course, and lo and behold, they have shown no salvation in earth or heaven. They have built up. They have built up kingdom against kingdom, standing army against standing army. Verily, they have brought judgment upon themselves. Hear the words of the Creator. 
O ye false gods and goddesses who set up heavenly kingdoms against me, who slew millions, hundreds of millions of mortals in order to make other names in mine, worshipful on earth and in heavens thereof, ye who cried out falsely, behold, me, I am the light and the life. Doesn't Thoth say that? Doesn't Muhammad say that? Doesn't Christ say that? I am the morning star. I'm the light. Me, me, me. I am the light and the life. Come through me, right? Through me is the way of salvation. Why is there a hijack between you and the creator? Oh, well, the sun. You have to go through the sun. You must. Whether you call him Christ, Jesus, Yahusha, you put a Hebrew spin on it. It's the same story with the same dude, right? I'm saying that was invented to hijack you, to separate you from returning only to your creator because in Isaiah 43, there is no other savior but the creator. And your Messiah, your king returning, you have King David returning. There is no, no dispute over who's king. King David will return. Priest king, priest king will return. Prester John will return. Oh, believe it. <laughs> Believe it. You who cried out falsely, behold me. I am the light and the life. Through me is, a, is the way of salvation. Ye who have used your names to lead mortals and angels away from the Creator, saying of yourselves, behold me. I am the Lord. I am God. My heavenly place is the all highest. Behold, I had spoken in the olden times i had said whoso aspired to be a king of the earth or queen or emperor or ruler over the nation or people i give to him his desire he shall be bound with the people of his administration neither shall he rise to my emancipated heavens remember 432 is what we are achieving from the 216 base frequency we're in it's all harmony though it's all harmony they got you out of 216 and put you in 440. Trying to get ahead of you. You're getting it to 432. You're then flipping that into 864. These are higher octaves of heaven. This is just energy. Every time you double it, you're in another octave, another higher emancipated heaven. <laughs> to the earth carried up with him every soul that he had dominion over. He shall be bound unto the people in that first and second resurrection until even the lowest of them are raised in wisdom and virtue and good works sufficient for the grade of brides and bridegrooms to my Ethrian heavens, Etherian heaven. All right, whatever these realms are. All right, so I'm just, you know, we're just talking about higher frequencies. All right, so, and if a king stretches forth his arm to subdue an annex other countries unto his own suffer thou him to do so for he is magnifying his bondage for the resurrection of the low this is what they fear the return of the energy that they put out it you know is inevitable they have to get the return of what they put out and thou shalt apply these rules unto all earthly rulers by, uh, be they kings or queens or emperors or presidents or governors or legislators or judges or popes or priests or preachers or whosoever presumed to rule over or to lead or to exact servitude from others and the term of bondage unto them in the lower heavens shall be in proportion to the magnitude of their dominions. But to whomsoever attaineth dominion by the sword, by the sword colonizing you by the sword enslaving you by the sword we're getting back into Moabite or extendeth dominion by the sword and by blood and death his bondage shall be a hundredfold and whosoever maintaineth his dominion by standing armies thou shalt com compute the number thereof and to him and his officers the bondage and the lowest heaven shall be equal to ten times the number of soldiers thereof, and ten times the number of years of the servitude of the multitude of his armies. 
For whosoever taketh from my people for his own glory or dominion, taketh from my people from his own glory or dominion, taketh the, from my people from his own glory or dominion. Oh, this is our dominion under this zodiac constitution. We're going to make a treaty with the corporation and forget about these other tribes. Forget about the Hebrew. Forget about Israel, the sons of Jacob. We're going to get our land for who? We are going to get our land for Moabites. Oh, we're going to transfer inheritance by making a deal with the corporation. And we're going to do it for the Moabite. Now, whose inheritance is this here? Whose dominion is this here? Is it Atlantean dominion? Or did Atlantis get knocked off because it wasn't their dominion? So if you're claiming Atlantis, you're in the bads, man. And once you're in the bad, you can't be in the goods, man. Now let's get it. Here's the fun part. All right. Let's skip down. Whosoever engageth in war or leadeth in war or is a captain or a general and cause the death of whom I created alive he shall not rise to inherit my emancipated heavens as long as there remaineth war upon the earth but he shall toil in the lowest heavens of the earth to educate and rise up the druges thereof which shall be his labor and those have, that have great riches and many servants his resurrection shall be no faster than the resurrection of those that serve him. And those that hath great riches and yet no servants, but liveth for himself, thou shalt apportage, apportion his place in the first resurrection, even according to the good he might have done, and he obeyed, had he obeyed my commandments, my commandments, and he shall do in heaven what he neglected to do on earth. Now let's check this part out. Let's go to verse uh, 31. But when a subject goeth to a God and saith, Behold, thou hast said, Whither I go, I will call all men unto me, and I have believed in thee. Then that God shall not put him away. So if you calling on Jesus and you die and you die, you say, where's Jesus? Jesus can't put you away. Jesus has to save you. But where's Jesus going to do it at? Which heaven will he save you in? And will you be bound with this false Christ in his false heaven? And will he deliver the promises that he falsely gave you if he's the false Christ? And not the creator. Not on the right hand side of the creator. Oh, Muhammad, Muhammad. Yeah, Muhammad's going to have, Thoth is going to have a nice little uh, heaven for you. But is it going to be all that you uh, imagine it to be? And will you be bound with Thoth and his fake ass heaven? So whether. But when a man, when a subject goeth to a God and says, Behold, thou hast said, Whither I go, I will call all men unto me, and I believe in thee. Then what God shall, then that God shall not put him away. While Osiris was worshipped, I gave unto Osiris the false. <laughs> when Ashereth was worshipped, I gave unto her. When Baal was worshipped, I gave him to Baal. Baal, I gave the bays. I gave it to him. I gave thought. Listen. But when any of these false gods were no longer worshipped, behold, I gave them no more subjects. 
and that's what they wanted and you're going to see why because the more subjects they have the longer they're in bondage remember they have to change they have to raise the frequency eventually of all the people they led astray according to this document here I mean bear with it it's, it, it's an interesting take on things because it's saying that these guys no longer want to be worshipped while you're worshipping them. But the more you worship them, the more you keep them in bondage. Because they are in bondage as long as you are worshipping them. So while Baal was worshipped, I gave unto Baal, Baal. And when any of these false gods were no longer worshipped, behold, I gave them no more subjects. As long as Brahma is worshipped, I will give unto uh, I will give unto him who is before me. As long as Buddha is worshipped, I will give unto him who is before me. As long as Christ is worshipped, I will give unto him who is before me. As long as Mohammedans are upheld on earth, more by Islam, Sultan, Sultan. As long as Mohammedans are upheld on earth, I will give unto him. Who built up Muhammad. And when all of you have purified. Chosen up. And raised up all those who idolize you. In that same time will I raise you up to higher heavens also. So these gods are bound to lower heavens. As long as they have worshippers. So whose side are they on? Yours or mine? If Muhammad no longer wants to be worshipped, I think he's rooting for me. Oh, you think he's your buddy? He's my pal. Because he wants to be free from you. Crazy people. Not believing the creator. Only believing some jargon, some doctrine. Not understanding that you are indigenous and they're putting you on a ball, spinning you around, making you crazy. You have to reverse everything to see. You have to reverse everything and resist all they have taught you and stop resisting the creator stop resisting order and that which truly makes sense turn back on your senses robots you have a creator an energy a frequency that you are surfing on and swimming in and they didn't give it to you it's already in you you are the image you are the frequency For this reason, you were created to be independent of their hijack. And when you're independent of their hijack, you would no longer long to be independent of each other. You will want to assemble because you would see it all purely, pure water. You would see that you are already together. As long as Muhammad and are upheld on earth I will give unto him who built up Muhammad and when all of you have purified and raised up those who idolize you in that same time will I raise you up to a higher heaven also as said this is supposed to be uh you know this creator's energy or you know daughter or son or something like that so you know we're getting the babies out so as said that now when the voice ceased and all was still, the false gods and goddesses raised up their heads and they spoke the one voice saying, Thou art just, O Jehovah, or O Creator. For unto thee do I covenant that I will serve thee forever. Neither will I aspire to rise up to higher heavens till I have raised up all whom I have led astray. So according to this source, these false gods, including Muhammad, including Christ, you know, made a covenant like, look, I'm with you. And yeah, I want to not be trapped here in the lower vibration. I mean, what would you do if you were looking at, you know, a hundred years to a uh, hundred years to a thousand years and, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> solitude. All right. You might say, look, creator, I get it. I would like to raise up. I would like to choose up. And in that way, um, it says, uh, you are justified unto you, unto thee, do I now covenant. So they made a covenant with the creator that they're going to 
serve the creator according to this source neither will they inspire to rise up to higher heavens till they have raised up all who they have led astray so that is according to this source you know what i mean what's going down now make me strong O creator and this my everlasting covenant they made a covenant teach me O father father the labor i shall do thou shall that thou shalt be glorified forever. Thus ended the judgment. God is, God's marshals removed them to the places allotted for them. So they got removed out of, out of uh, the Most High's, uh, you know what I'm saying, presence by these marshals, by these angels. All right? And they went to work. All right. So again, whose side are they on? You're protecting them, right? You're fighting to worship them. And they're fighting to free themselves from your worship. Now, let's jump right in, man. And uh, I wanted to dig on this uh, spirit science for a few minutes. Jump back in it. And I want to compare this to some of the stuff that we got from the brother uh, Prince Uriel Bay as we continue that. And, you know, we're going to flow with this series as long as it takes, man, to get through that. But these are all the uh, foundations we have to lay across along the way, uh, you know, because we're surfing a specific frequency here and wave and we got to. You know, dig all these things up. You know what I'm saying? But remember, so we got here. Saeed Ahmed Amarudan has pointed out that Hermes Trimegistus, which is Thoth, has a major place in Islamic tradition. All right. That uh, mentioned in the book of Edris that he was a prophet. So this Thoth is a prophet. This Thoth is a prophet. And whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present Heavenly dominions inspiring his followers under the name Muhammad. Muhammad is Thoth. All right. So now we're going to get into spirit science and talk some more about this Thoth. And everything we do here is fair use. All up in your caboose, bone. Back up off me, man. Give me 50 feet. Soldier boy with the Draco. <coughs> All right, let's go. Y'all yeah, know I'm crazy. Go, let go. All right, man. All right, man. So, yeah, hope you're enjoying the drop library. Keep getting, you know, digging on these books. It's all free for you. It's all free for you. It's one of the things that we love providing the community, man, is a little bit of that pure water. All right. Spirit science. Now, I know it's corny, but you're going to see how real it is. You're going to see how real it is to these temples, how real it is to these paradigms. Let go. Our stories of the past have been changed, altered, mistranslated, and completely been misunderstood as we rounded the curve on the procession of the equinox. Modern views of our history account for many things, but completely dismiss many very important pieces in the puzzle. For example, the pyramids of Giza. There is no modern theory that accounts for how these could have been made. Individually, each block cannot be pulled even with 50 men pulling it, let alone drag it for hundreds of miles and then stack them on top of each other 450 feet in the air, in such a precise way that even modern technology can't achieve. Not to mention having it lined up precisely with both Orion's belt, a golden mean, and Fibonacci spiral, and be a primary nodal point of every sacred site on the planet. And that's just one example. Our history is not what we think. Many things that we've been led to believe to be true simply is not. This has got to be the biggest. The field of archaeology recently saw some monumental discoveries that are rocking the foundation of what we think we know about ourselves. Many ancient cities such as Babylon, Erech, and Akkad that were written about in the Bible and other ancient texts were always thought to be myths because no one could prove they existed. Then, one of them was found. This led to finding another, and then another. Inside one of these cities, archaeologists found thousands of cylindrical clay tablets hidden deep within the earth under this ancient city. The tablets were completely covered in text, written in cuneiform, and tell an ancient story that spans back over hundreds of thousands of years on this planet, describing the history of the earth and the origins of the human race in great detail. Now, the first thing we all want to do is just say that they were making things up. They didn't know the history of Earth, and they were simply creating tales to explain where they came from. However, if this was true, how can we explain how they knew so many things about the universe that would seem impossible to know? Not only did the Dogons know all about the distant planets in the solar system, but so did the Sumerians. They described them all in great detail in these Sumerian records. They also knew about the procession of the equinox. That's a tough one for a historian to understand, because it takes over 2,000 years of continuous observation to actually learn that the Earth has a wobble. The Sumerians had this information from day one of their civilization. A man named Zacharias Sitchin spent a long time transcribing these texts and had put them all together in his books, but many others have also done the same, and the interpretations are always very similar. 
Not only that, but Thoth has also shared information about this with us, and his account matches the Sumerian records. Adamus and other channelings discuss it as well. If you see all of these records and sources, there is a huge connection between the stories. Now, this story spans back hundreds of thousands of years into our past. It talks about Tiamat and Nibiru, the Nephilim, seeding the human race, Adam and Eve, and the children of Lemuria. This portion of the story is really interesting, but not the most crucial to know. We're not going to be covering this at this time. We are, however, going to be picking up the story at the end of Lemuria, and discussing the events of Atlantis up to present day. What I'm going to tell you is a mix of what these records say, along with what Thoth has told us for some finer details. Please have your own experience while watching this. I'm not going to tell you that this is fact. I am simply saying, decide for yourself. There was a time, long ago, when humans existed at a very high level of consciousness. We were interdimensional and were very psychic. We communicated through thought and emotion, much like how animals do rather than speaking or writing, which would seem very primitive. We lived primarily on a large string of islands called Lemuria, but there was a consciousness shift. We moved up in consciousness and the islands of Lumeria sank beneath the oceans. At the time of this shift, a new continent rose out of the waters. We called it Atlantis. Back in the early 1900s, the spiritual path of the United States was similar to what's happening today. People began to learn about meditation and study ancient lands like Atlantis and Lemuria. We actually found quite a bit of evidence that Lemuria existed, and it had to do with coral. See, the ocean floor does rise and fall. Coral can exist up to 150 feet under the surface of the water. In 1910, the surface of the ocean was probably higher because they were able to see coral rings heading away from Easter Islands for a great distance. These rings were estimated to be found at 1800 feet, which means that for them to have existed, they would have had to be much higher and sunk slowly. Probably more important, they also found the exact same fauna and flora from the Hawaiian Islands all the way to the Easter Islands. This is a great distance, but if you look at a map, you'll see a long string. That string, according to Thoth, used to run along the western shores of Lemuria. It is only on these islands that have the same flora and fauna. Same trees, bugs, bacteria, everything. Science can only explain this if there were closer land bridges between these islands at one point. Although we were studying this at that time, World War I began soon after, and we lost interest in spirituality and the ancient lands for a very long time. After the sinking of Lemuria and the rising of Atlantis, at first the human race became scattered. We moved to various islands and continents all over the world because we didn't have a home. Yet, we didn't know where to go. At that time, there were about 1,000 humans at a very high consciousness, more than all of the rest. They were called the Nikals. Today, we know them as Ascended Masters. The Nikals began preparing Atlantis to be our new home. They projected their energies across the surface of the continent in the form of the Tree of Life, not with 10 circles, but with 12, an extra on top on the island of Udal, and an extra on the bottom in the water. There were 10 components on the mainland, and even though it extended over hundreds of miles on the surface, it was projected to the accuracy of a single atom. We chose to move to Atlantis because of the Kundalini. In humans, the Kundalini is often referred to as the energy serpent that runs up and down your spine. When activated, it provides an immense amount of energy through all of the chakras. The Earth itself also has a Kundalini because the Earth is alive, like an organism, running from the center of the planet to a specific place on the surface. Wherever the Kundalini resides, the people there become the spiritual leaders of the world. The Earth chose Atlantis to be the new energetic center of the planet. After Atlantis, the Kundalini moved to the mountains of Tibet, which is why the Buddhists were the leaders in pure spirituality for the last 13,000 years. It was a very pure place. It moved again within the last 10 years, but that's a story for another time. If you want to read more, check out the book The Serpent of Light by Drunvalo Melchizedek. Suddenly, in a single day, the Nikals breathed life into the Tree of Life on the surface of Atlantis. This created vortexes of energy rotating out of each and every circle. Once the vortexes were established, the children of Lemuria began to be called forth. Millions upon millions of Lemurians who had settled all across the planet began to be pulled toward Atlantis. A great migration began. However, the Lemurian body of consciousness had only reached the age of 12 as a planetary consciousness. Because we were right-brained, we were a female species, like a 12-year-old girl, and some of our centers weren't working yet. They had worked with these energies, but only mastered eight of the ten. Each migrating Lemurian was attracted to one of these eight centers on Atlantis, depending on the nature of the individual. There, they settled and began to build cities. That left two vortexes with nobody using them. So you have one migration coming into a place that's already there, that already has people there. They're pulling their vortexes into an area, so you already have an invasion with these Lemurians. Now watch how they spin this shit. Not a single person. 
These two vortexes were pulling life toward them, and in life, you can't have an empty place. Life will find a way to fill it. Similar to if you are driving along a freeway, following another car, and you drop too far behind, someone will fill the place. That's exactly what happened on Atlantis. Though the Lemurians had only filled eight of the vortex areas, Mayan records state clearly that there were ten cities in Atlantis when it fell. You can see these records in the Troano document, which is now located in the British Museum. This doc- Is this play play? So we can research these documents, even in the Maya, have records of what's going on with certain of these areas, right? So, you know what I'm saying? We're getting some babies out here, but look how it connects to what the bro, uh, you know what I'm saying? The brother, uh, P Prince Uriel Bey. You know what I mean? We're going to get into that. So, all right. So, clearly, we're talking about, you know, seeds of life. We're talking about all these different things. Clearly, they're coming with an Atlantean you know what I'm saying, good, here's the good story of Atlantis, but then they're going to say they were hijacked by something else, and something else did something else to them. But that's what they always do. They make you forget about the original hijack itself. So while they spin you into Atlantis is good, think about the indigenous before Thoth came, before the Muhammad, before this energy, this spell barrier, this ray of vibration hit you with these pyramids. Think about your sacred trees. Think about when they're talking about Lemuria coming in, they already had sacred trees. And now they're doing experiments. And the brother's going to be talking about the experiments the Moors were doing. And how some things went wrong with these vortexes. So he's talking about them doing something. Something related to the Philadelphia experiment. Research that time travel research that they're doing stuff in the celestial this is thought spirit magic science he's going to say moorish magic pay attention to all these keywords because now you can see that he's going to spin it the same way they're spinning it it ain't that there's no drop in it is that the angle that they're taking is look we were doing something good but then some people did something that messed it up for everybody and they're going to exclude the creator from all of this. Oh, you know, we did some of these vortexes and then this happened and this happened and that happened and that happened. The creator destroyed this place. He destroyed all this experimentation. He destroyed all this colonization that they're just calling Lemuria. And then these other guys did this, these Martians. But then we're going to talk about Moors on Mars. Stay tuned. The document is estimated to be 3,500 years old, and it describes in detail the sinking of Atlantis. To fill these two empty vortexes, according to Thoth, two extraterrestrial races stepped in. Oh. Not one, but two completely different races. The first race were the Hebrews, coming from our future. <laughs> Thoth says that they came from off-planet, but we don't know where exactly. The Hebrews were kind of like a kid who... We came from somewhere that they don't know? Doesn't that sound familiar, Negro? We don't know who they are. And we say, if you can't tell us who we are, how can you tell us who we're not? Well, we came from somewhere, these Hebrews. <laughs> oh, Thoth. Oh, Thoth, stop it. Detail the sinking of Atlantis. To fill these two empty vortexes, according to Thoth, two extraterrestrial races stepped in. Not one, but two completely different races. The first race were the Hebrews, coming from our future. Thoth says that they came from off-planet, but we don't know where exactly. The Hebrews were kind of like a kid who went through fifth grade and didn't make it, so they had to do that grade over again. Oh. They learned all the math, the left brain stuff, but they didn't get the right brain aspect of evolving consciousness, the doing. They didn't graduate to the next level of evolution, so they had to do it again. They knew a lot of things that we didn't know yet and brought many concepts and ideas to us that we weren't aware Ah, so Thoth is admitting he was learning from these Hebrews and that they came from the future, but he doesn't quite know, he doesn't quite get what's going on above the barrier. Which is why in Tablet 8 of the Emerald Tablets, he's running from the Hounds of the Barrier. Because he doesn't under he, has, he doesn't have a comprehension. A level of, of, of mystery that's above Thoth. And the Dweller doesn't even know what's going on above the Barrier. So these Hebrews are coming from some futuristic energy. Going through what he's calling a cycle of graduation. But is anybody putting these Hebrews up on their graduation of who they are and how to graduate? Of how to choose up? Are we graduating today? Aware of yet. Now, if this is true, this would explain quite a few things about the Hebrew people in general. 
They seem to have many sacred geometries hidden within their culture. It also puts perspective on the story of Exodus. Perhaps Moses incarnated into that lifetime to free the Hebrews because they were not direct descendants of humans and were being treated unfairly. Hmm. Or could it be that Moses was visited by an ascended master of the Hebrews who guided him to free their people? Given what we know about dimensions and consciousness, it definitely puts a fresh perspective on old stories that didn't make much sense. An ascended master of the Hebrews. So now you're going to hear we. Even, you know, I'm saying this, 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 this Uriel Bay talking about ascended masters, masters, masters. Emerald tablets, ascended masters. But which ones ascended masters of the Hebrews? Now, when they say ascended masters, they're talking about the dweller ascending from below, from the halls of Amente, ascending from the bottom. So he has to ascend. He has to come on up. Just pay attention to their words sense we could talk about this more but let's continue for now there were no problems caused by the hebrews coming to atlantis they actually benefited our evolution uh. the other race that stepped in caused big problems these beings came from the nearby planet of mars, mars. See, according to thoth mars looked very much like earth a little less than a million years ago it was beautiful it had oceans and water and trees that were just fantastic but something happened to them and it has to do with something called the lucifer experiment from the very beginning of creation everything is the lucifer experiment now you're going to hear the brother talking about experiments on mars so remember they called it lucifer experiment not me simply an experiment creation itself was just consciousness creating and inhabiting itself in <laughs> that creation no, no, there is no, no divine plan spirit can no, you can't the race that, that stepped in caused this. big problems Watch this. these beings came from the nearby planet of mars see according to thoth mars looked very much like earth a little less than a million years ago it was beautiful. It had oceans and water and trees that were just fantastic. But something happened to them, and it has to do with something called the Lucifer Experiment. From the very beginning of creation, everything is simply an experiment. Creation itself... Bang. Look how fast they threw this Ra in here. Look how fast they throw Thoth, Eye of Ra, symbol in your brain when they talk about creation from the beginning of consciousness. So they, they trace their creation to chaos. That it was just some some explosion, some chaos, some chaotic thing happened. We come from order. But in their celestial barrier, it started with chaos for them. And it started right here with this. Self was just consciousness creating and inhabiting itself in that creation. There is no divine plan. Spirit can do whatever it wants. No divine plan. No creator. No divine plan. They have duplicity. You have a connection they have duplicity they are torn apart having said that if spirit decides to cut itself off from the rest of consciousness and create a separate reality on its own it can do that too this is called the lucifer experiment because spirit cutting itself out cu cutting itself off from the creator's consciousness so when i say that you are in the water you have to be water become water bruce lee say be water what's the secret bruce lee be water you have to flow you have to flow you have to be water <laughs> you got to be water you got to surf the wave now these people didn't want to surf the wave so they cut themselves off from the wave it decides to cut itself off from the rest of consciousness and create a separate reality on its own Bang. it can do that too this is called the Lucifer experiment. Bang. Because spirit is God, it can do this. There is nothing wrong with that. We've kind of Spirit's been led to believe God. that Lucifer is evil and the devil. This just isn't true. Lucifer is Lucifer is not evil, guys. So now we're in a Lucifer commercial. It's just another means of perceiving the reality. It is not a unity perception of oneness, but rather a duality perception of two. See? So you're no longer united. Now you're torn apart. Now this is 440 hertz. Don't you get it? When you see the somatic experiments with 440, 432 on the sand, and you see it being torn apart, you see it being disconnected, that is Lucifer. That is duality. Hold up. Hold up. Man. Let's just get it right here. Oh, no, I want to keep that, keep that. Hold that, hold that. Remember, whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present... Heavenly dominions inspiring his followers under the name Muhammad. Man, this is how we surfed away. You don't ever know. Never know. How we 
was going to go go. All right, four three two. What are we talking about? You flip it. You're in a. You double it. You're in a higher optic. Four three two. It's together. It's unifying. Watch the unity of four three two versus four forty. It is a frequency war. Thoth put a ray of vibration. He put four forty on you. Don't you play, play. So this is 432, alright? This is sand on a metal, you know, table. This vibration's being put on it. This tone's being put on it. Now watch it disconnect in 440 hertz. Same sand, same table. But look how, how these lines are disconnecting from each other. It is duality, right? Now let's go back into unity. Four, three, two. Everything connects. If this metal was bigger, you'll see a bunch of these symbols like this. Everything will be connecting. A bunch of unity. Look at this circle, unifying. Look at how clear the lines become. The more you play the tone, it becomes more unified. Let's go back to 440. It starts to disconnect again before your very eyes. What are they doing to us people? Every time you're in a car, you listen to your music, it comes out in this frequency. 440 hertz every single time, guaranteed. Every MP3. So we have a framework to put everything in 432. Every, you know, pop song, whatever the case is, we got our own music licenses, we're doing our own thing, we're putting together our own framework, man. So that's why, because we want to be connected, we want to be unified, it's a frequency war, you can't talk unity and walk around in a disunified frequency. We're only talking energy, frequency, and vibration, that's what Tesla said, if you want to understand the secrets, you got to break them down into energy, frequency, and vibration. It's a frequency war. Let's get a little more of the spirit signs. Yeah, fair use on your abuse. Duality, right? One more time. Having said that, if spirit decides to cut itself off from the rest of consciousness and create a separate reality on its own, it can do that too. This is called the Lucifer experiment. Pay attention. Because spirit is God, it can do this. There is nothing wrong with that. We've kind of been led to believe that Lucifer is evil and the devil. This just isn't true. Wow. Lucifer is just another means of perceiving the reality. It is not a unity perception of oneness, but uh -huh. rather a duality perception of two-ness. Cut off. Everything is cut off. Cut off. Everything is cut off. Cut off. Everything is cut off. They cut down your trees. They cut them off. They cut you off and gave you pyramids. Four, three, two. radio frequency look at the distortion no clear lines this is what's coming in your ear your cochlea distortion 432 watch all the distortion come back into order it's going from chaos to order look at the lines becoming clearer order over chaos order over chaos the creator frequency, unity, not duality, separation, not separation, not distortion. Look at this. Look how distorted it got that fast in 440 hertz. What do you think it's doing to you all day through your television? Everything is coming out of 440, people. This is all day, all day up on you. And this is more important than the whole entire Moabite discussion. But the Moabite discussion is only a manifestation of this chaos. 
Going back to who? Thoth. Who's Thoth? Whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present heavenly dominions, inspiring his followers under Muhammad, Islam, Baphomet, Muhammad. All the same. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. There's the flower of life pattern for Lucifer as well, but that's uh -huh. a big topic for another time. Anytime the Lucifer experiment has been attempted in the universe, it always ends in failure. Uh. The species will cut itself off from love and will become incredibly male, left-brained. What always ends up happening is that everyone becomes very greedy. There is no compassion for one another, and everyone ends up fighting until they end up killing themselves. More than a million years ago, the beings on Mars joined the Lucifer experiment, and it failed dramatically. Basically, they cut themselves off from the unity of the universe and created a separate reality. When the Martians severed the love bond, they became pure male, logical beings with no emotions. What happened on Mars was that they ended up fighting. Mars became a battleground. Eventually, it became clear that Mars was not going to survive. They blew their atmosphere away and destroyed the surface of the planet. Nova recently did an episode on planetary magnetics, and they found some interesting things about Mars. The planet didn't have a magnetic system, however the surface was magnetized, implying that at one point it did, but that something happened. Now, we've been discussing the star tetrahedron before, and now I want to give you a brief understanding of the Merkava. The Merkava was known in ancient times as the Chariot of Ascension. It is the star tetrahedral energy field around the body. All around the world, there are references to this in ancient texts. When activated to its full potential, the Merkava, which is both a tool and part of your being, can be used to do the impossible, included but not limited to changing dimensions and traveling through the universe. Before Mars was destroyed, they built huge tetrahedral pyramids. They built three, four, and five-sided pyramids, eventually building a complex that was able to build a synthetic Merkaba. Synthetic. Keyword. This is a synthetic frequency. They have synthetic fake earth chakras that they built their own chakras. They built their own synthetic energy grid. This is the axis consciousness shift. They put their grid. Thoth put his grid on you. His ray of vibration, a synthetic one, a outward one, a pyramid is just a synthetic version of you. But when they're bombarding you with 440 hertz and fake prophets, fake frequencies, tearing you apart from the creator, hijacking your direct energy transfer flow. When the creator breathed his Ruach into your nostrils, it is direct. It is not hijack. It didn't come through Thoth. It didn't come through Christ. It didn't come through Muhammad. This is what they taught you. Because you have fallen. You've been invaded, my people. Come out of her. After a million years or so, it's been eroded, but the proof is there. Now, because the Martians were severed from the unity consciousness, they couldn't create a living Merkaba. They simply used it as a tool. They created a synthetic Merkaba to travel in time and find a new home. A small group of Martians tried to get away from Mars before it was destroyed, and that place they found was Earth, about 65,000 years in our past. They saw this little vortex sitting there, just pulling in life, with no one in it. They didn't ask permission. Being part of the Lucifer experiment, they just said, all right, let's do it. And they stepped onto that vortex, and in doing so, they joined and changed our evolutionary path. Thoth's father, Thom, was one of the Nakals who set up Atlantis on the island of... Narkals, Udal, all this in the Emerald Tablets. Narkal, you're going to hear the brother Bay when we get to him, Prince Uriel Bay. We'll talk about the Narkals as well. So they're spitting the exact same damn history. Very interesting. Very interesting. Udal. That island, the top of the Tree of Life, was the brain of Atlantis, and on it was a small city called Poseidon. This city is what Plato was discussing when he said that Poseidon bore ten children, the ten circles on the Tree of Life. Right. Poseidon was made of three rings painted in black, red, and white stones, and it was the symbol for Atlantis. Right. The inner circle represented the Nacals. The middle circle... Oh, so the inner circle of the, of the Poseidon situation are the Nacals. Then they call this part Maya, which again, the people didn't call themselves Maya. They're being called Maya, so we don't really, you know, subscribe to no titles and, and all this that's been given to these people, not the indigenous ones. Let's go. Or the priesthood, called the Maya, and the outer circle represented the regular people of Atlantis. We'll come back to this down the road. There were only a few thousand Martians who came to Earth through the synthetic Merkaba. The first thing they did when they arrived in Atlantis was try to take over the continent. They tried to declare war and invade. 
That's the first thing they did when they invaded America? Why does this sound like the invasion of America all of a sudden? Pay attention, people, because what they told you was a million years ago, kajillion years ago, just to get you fucked up. Fuck their timeline. What does this sound like? Use your senses. However, they were vulnerable due to their small numbers, compared to the millions of Atlanteans, hmm. and we finally subdued them. Hmm. We were able to stop them from conquering us, but we could not send them back. When this happened on our evolution... So we can stop our invaders from conquering, but we couldn't put them on the boats and send them back, so what happened? path, we now had the planetary consciousness of a 14-year-old girl. Hmm. The Martians were an incredibly male species and also very old. So what you had was a 14-year-old girl being taken over by a 60 or 70-year-old man. Weird. We had no choice in the matter. The Martians just stepped in and said, like it or not, we're here. They didn't... Now we're talking Martians and we're gonna talk about Moors on Mars, man. Moabite Baal Thoth, man. Remember, there is no planets. These are all planes, a celestial connected area. We'll get back in that Giannini, Worlds Beyond the Pole. I suggest everyone check that series out. One through ten, we already got there, did it. We're going to get some more out of it. We read one through chapter one through ten already for you. So go back and check out those in the archives. Of the, you know what I'm saying? Check out all these links, man. So we have these Martians now just taking over these these these, these kind-hearted Lemurians. So now they're flipping it. They're not talking in the same context anymore. Now they're talking about these people that are coming through these vortexes on Mars. Remember Mars. These look at these melanated people coming from Mars. You know what I'm saying? Hijacking your energy here. But they're also referring to a recent invasion. Let's go. I don't care what we thought or felt about it. Really, it was no different from what the settlers of North America did to the Native Americans. What? I said we're talking about a recent invasion and they throw this right on time all upon y'all? I told you they're talking about you being invaded. Now let's talk about Moors on Mars and their invasion. Now let's talk about how you can have a colony of Morocco and so-called West Africa here on the land of the indigenous people who already have a confederacy here, who already are confederate with each other, unified with each other. Why do you need to make a treaty with colonizers to take out the indigenous people? Oh, it's very similar to what happened here. Ain't it, Mr. St Spirit Science Man? Of a 14-year-old girl. The Martians were an incredibly male species, and also very old. So what you had was a 14-year-old girl being taken over by a 60 or 70-year-old man. Weird. We had no choice in the matter. The Martians just stepped in and said, like it or not, we're here. They didn't care what we thought or felt about it. Really, it was no different from what the settlers of North America did to the Native Americans. Dang. Once the initial conflict was over, it was agreed that the Martians would try and understand this female thing they lacked. This emotional feeling, which they had none of at all. Things more or less settled for a while, but the Martians slowly began to implement their left brain technologies, which the Atlanteans knew nothing about. One after the other, the Martians kept putting out these left brain inventions, and the Atlanteans slowly began to see uh. things through their left brain. We slowly began to become a male species. The Martians gained control. Nah, let's do a belly flop. The same year the Christ grid was activated. Christ the year grid. was 1989, and we were having some troubles with the grays. A now they're going to talk about these grays. We think, to listen to the this grid. This always happens, not just with us, but with all evolving consciousness. Every time a takeover seems imminent, a very pure person will find their way to the ship and raise it into the air. The earth and sun will connect with that person and give him or her great power. Then whatever that person thinks and feels will happen. And think about it. If consciousness is the primary core component of the entire planet, does it not make sense that it would have its own defense mechanism? This defense is an airship that plugs into the earth and the sun, allowing the earth to have protection. Our takeover event actually already happened, the same year the Christ grid was activated. The year was 1989, and we were having some troubles with the Greys, a race of ETs who were slowly plotting takeover wait. due to a previous scuffle we were having. A very pure woman in Peru made the ascension process into the Christ consciousness grid. Peru? A pure woman in Peru made an ascension? Wait a minute, I want to talk about this conscious grid. Let's talk a little bit more about this grid, because all we're talking about is access conscious grids. One. Half of the research team, which stayed in Australia, did the experiment again with new subjects. And lo and behold, people were just naturally able to see more faces. After this experiment, they knew that something definitely connects us all, and the field of noetics is learning more about it daily. It's mass consciousness. In lesson 11, I showed you the three levels of consciousness. 
Each of these levels have their own consciousness grids around the planet, and our second level grid is based on squares and triangles. Many governments of the world, especially the Russian and US governments, were studying our grids back in the 60s and probably earlier. When mapping out the grid on the planet, you find little military bases on many of the nodal points of the grid. They're you find military bases on the points of the grid? Why? Because they're hijacking you. Now, if they would put a military base there, that means that before that, they set up their own military base there on top of your indigenous trees. Tons of these bases way out in the middle of nowhere, like on little islands like Guam. This couldn't be a coincidence that these government powers placed their bases right where the little spirals came out of the grid. They were trying to take control of the grid, because if you control consciousness, you control what we think and feel. So if you control the grid, they control everything you think and feel. Bang! This is your illusion, people. Hijack 101. That's the drop. Of course, there was another organization that had its hand in both of these governments, and still do, and we will discuss them soon enough. This grid is visible through astral projection as well. 13,000 years ago, it began. Thoth, Ra, and Aragat were to create a global... Thoth, Ra, and Aragat? Bang. ...complex that was able to build a synthetic Christ consciousness grid over a 13,000-year time period. Synthetic grid. Fake. The first thing they did was fly to a place which is now called the Giza Plateau, hmm. but back then it was known as the land of Chem. Thoth said he came to Chem and put a slave vibration on you. They're going with the same history. It was also a rainforest back then as well, not desert like it is today. Mm. First, they created a grid around the planet fourth dimensionally, and then began to construct it in the physical third dimension. They went to the male energetic axis of the Earth and constructed a complex which today is called the Solar Cross. So Egypt over there is the male energy. They just said you were violated by a male energy. Bang! These men were six dimensional beings at that time and were living at a very high level of consciousness. So whatever they thought happened instantly. It was that simple. According to Thoth, he built the Great Pyramid, not the Egyptian King Cheops. Thoth says that- Thoth says he came over there after Atlantis sunk here, America sunk here, and he built up the pyramid there. And that's the 18th dynasty, the Moses, let go. It was built 200 years prior to the pole shift and built very quickly. Mm. These pyramids were aligned precisely with both Fibonacci and golden mean spirals emanating from out of the solar cross. Interestingly enough, Edgar Casey also channeled that the pyramids were constructed in this time. The pyramids were also found to be built from the top down. From the top up, so they were built, you know, in a vibration from the top up. Now we've done research and click the link below where you'll see that these, the king's chamber is resonating at 440 hertz, people. 440 hertz. So the same 440 you got that separates you. The same 440 you got that separates you. The same 440 we're talking about that separates us. It's the same energy coming out of the king's chamber in this pyramid that Thoth raised up himself. Now let's get into Prince Uriel Bay. I want to start from the top of what we came at last time with this comprehension of what they came with with spirit science to let you know that they are surfing hand in hand with each other. But are they surfing the way? has a lot to do with it. Um, and uh, when we look at the events and things which occurred in Atlantis some 16,000, 20,000 years ago, and even a million years ago, we can better comprehend and uh, have an overall comprehension of exactly what occurred, or shall I say the cause and effect um, of ultimately what happened in the continental United States. So, uh, we then consider early Atlantis, Kemet, uh, axis, consciousness, grid changes, uh, Eschaic logometers, um, which is another way of saying Akashic records, lifelines of those Akashic records, uh, Moorish talismanic thaumaturgy. Uh, thaumaturgy is basically another term that's used for magic or ancient... Magic. Moorish magic. Listen again, we're talking about Thoth magic. Thoth Muhammad magic. Listen. Kemet, uh, axis, consciousness, grid changes, uh, Eschaic logometers, um, which is another way of saying Akashic records. Listen up. Lifelines of those Akashic records. Uh, Moorish talismanic thaumaturgy. Uh, thaumaturgy is basically another term that's used for magic or ancient magic. Magic. Um, we're also going to look at the science of ancestral incantations involving thaumaturgy. Uh, utilizing specific tones and language or languages of light 
we're going to look at genealogy as well as true geography. Um, now I know that uh, is, uh, is a lot, but as I said, all of these things relate directly and indirectly to uh, the history and the origins of the United States Corporation and why it was formed, etc. But as I said, going back to the time of Atlantis, when we look at um, about 20,000 years ago, there was a process that occurred uh, that involved the Moors of Atlantis at that time. You also had Moors on uh, Mars. Moors on Mars. I told you that train's never late. So you got Moors on Mars. Remember what the Martians did? The male energy, the frequency. Remember thought. So all this is... All right, so surf the wave. I'm just going to let this rock. I'm going to let you get it. And um, you also had Moors who were living underground at that time. These were uh, masters, ascended masters uh, from the sixth dimension. And <laughs> My bad. Ascended masters underground. All right, so you got the Thoth in the halls of Amente living underground with the dweller. He said he went down there. You know, set up his technology, set up the whole halls of Amente. All this is in the Emerald Tablets, people. So he's directly speaking of his ascended master. Who speaks of ascended masters when they're not talking the creator? They're talking about Ra consciousness, Thoth consciousness, the Thoth grid. Listen up, my people. Look at um, about 20,000 years ago. There was a process that occurred uh, that involved the Moors of Atlantis at that time, you also had Moors on uh, Mars, and um, you also had Moors who were living underground at that time. These were uh, masters, ascended masters uh, from the sixth dimension, and uh, I'll talk more about them in a minute. But the Moors that were actually living on Atlantis at that time, unfortunately, were involved in some experiments uh, similar to that of the Philadelphia experiment. Um, the Lucifer experiment on Mars. You just got it from spirit signs. You heard it yourself. The duality, the separation from the wave that they're swimming in. They wanted to separate from consciousness or the creator. Let's go. In the 40s, uh, involving time travel. Time travel. And uh, unfortunately, they lost control of this experiment and when uh, things got out of control ultimately it caused the cataclysmic event or destruction of Atlantis um, the ten islands of Atlantis and um, in addition to which uh, it ripped a series of holes through a number of dimensions Wow! Um, and ultimately that's what caused the uh, problems that occurred in and throughout the Moorish Empire uh, from that time up until the present. So as to questions about... So he's saying up from all that time up to the present, the reason why there's problems in the Moorish Empire is because they were on Mars doing Lucifer experiments and ripped open portals. And we got them ripping open portals today in CERN. You doing the same experiments? You are the fucking reason, man. If this is your language, if you're tracing it to Thoth and the people, his his soul power with his ray of vibration groveling at his feet, now you're doing Moorish magic science. And you're saying that's the reason for your downfall? The creator is causing your downfall. And yes, that's the reason the creator is causing it. Decline of the Moorish Empire... Uh, you then, again, have to go back to these events, uh, these experiments that they were conducting uh, in Atlantis. And uh, so when the time or the time machine experiment got out of control, uh, as I said, it ripped holes in, in the dimension. And, um, and so consequently, it also caused an axis or planetary axis shift. And when the planetary axis shift occurred, um, it literally affected everything uh, on the planet, um, including human memory uh, or human memory retention, because human memory is 
uh, largely dependent on magnetic fields. Magnetic fields, here's the drop. Human memory is largely dependent on magnetic fields, so if they control the conscious grid, they control the, they control the magnetic field, they wipe your memory, you don't know who you are, but some people do. Some people are given a different magnetic field, a synthetic magnetic field. Some people had pyramids to raise up their magnetic field to remember, to have the drop, to conquer those around them. Now your magnetic field comes with your sacred trees and when they cut down your crystal trees they're cutting down your magnetic field your conscious grid to set up their own to weaken yours to weaken the earth that's why they pollute and chemtrail and poison the earth to weaken the natural magnetic field of the natural adamites adam the creator's frequency and replace it with their synthetic frequency that seems to be so glorified in the history. And the magnetic field of the earth uh, literally collapsed and was affected because of the uh, planetary axis shift and, as I said, also because of this uh, particular experiment that they were conducting. And again, you go to your magnetic field today, you return to your trees, return to your magnetic field and see if your memory returns. Um, and so, uh, after this occurred, or after this time, you had the, many of the ascended masters from the sixth dimension who came back to Earth, uh, to assist the Moors, um, that dispersed over various parts of the, of the planet, of the globe. Ascended masters, Thoth, Thoth. Who else do you say? Ra. All these are their ascended masters. They have to ascend from underneath, inside, low in the halls of Amente, inside the earth. They're being assisted by fallen angels, and they use these fallen angels to conquer you. And they've made deals with the devil. Uh, in Kemet, um, in the Americas, and many other places, Peru, etc., and, um, and so in order to assist the Moors, uh, what they did was that they started a process known as stair-step evolution. Um, because the Moors at that time from Atlantis had literally gone back into a state of Berberism or so-called barbarism. Barbary. Um, Barbarian. And uh, they had lost a lot of the information, the sciences, etc. that they had once learned uh, or mastered in Atlantis. And so... Uh, through a series of, of uh, instructions, these ascended masters in what was known as the Tat Brotherhood, um, they would, through the stair-step evolutionary process, they would instruct these Moors in different areas of sciences in hopes that they would uh, regain or recall much of what was lost. Hold up, hold up, excuse me, my bro. You know, you just keep saying this Tad Brotherhood, and I feel like I've heard that before as well. I hope I can... Oh, what's this? The Avengers or some shit? What's this? Let's see if we can get it. ...be corrected soon. The Nicals did their best to save Atlantis. They sent most of the lower dimensional beings back, at least as many as they could, and sealed up the dimensional tear. Despite this, the situation got really bad, really fast. All of the economic systems collapsed. Financial, social, and all concepts of how life ought to be completely broke down. Everyone on Atlantis began getting sick with weird diseases, and the entire continent went into a state of survival. Wow, like weird diseases? Does that sound like the creator is putting a plague on them? A plague on Egypt? Is Egypt getting sick with weird diseases? It was no longer about living. It became about surviving until tomorrow. It was a literal hell on Earth. The Nicals had no idea what to do. They were children compared to the events that had been thrust upon them. So, they prayed. They prayed to the highest levels of conscious life in the universe, asking for help from anyone who could hear them. The problem was reviewed on many high levels of life. Who I am drawing is the Justice League, because the 11th and 12th dimensions are completely incomprehensible. So these are the highest level of fallen angels, right? Anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? That means that you don't believe that the creator is above the barrier hearing you. You just want anybody to pick up your signal, and these are the brotherhood of people picking up signals to us in our current state what they told us was this we were going to fall we were going to hit rock bottom level one 
the lowest place we possibly could be in the universe and still survive. Also, we were changing polarity. We were no longer a female species, so we were starting from square one as a male species. And finally, and this was the shocker, we would only have 13,000 years to return to Christ consciousness. <laughs> Normally, it takes hundreds of thousands of years for a species to get to Christ right. consciousness. Hijack 101, Christ consciousness. Hijack 101, let's return to the consciousness of these fallen angels when they can have their glory days in their Christ, their false Christ, their Louis Mon consciousness. This is not the creator consciousness. This is their grid, and let's see how they set their grid up. We had to do it in a fraction of the time. If we didn't, we would not survive. This has never happened before in the universe, ever. Thoth, who was the priest king of Atlantis at the time, learned that they would have- We just call him the priest king of Atlantis. So he's their priest king. Who's your priest king? To perform this experiment on themselves. They received instructions from the highest levels of life and they went on their way. Thoth proceeded with a being named Ra and Aragat, who were previous kings of Atlantis, and mm. began the experiment. To understand what they did, we have to talk about consciousness grids. A planetary grid is an etheric crystalline structure that envelops the planet and holds the consciousness of any one species of life. Wow. This grid does have an electromagnetic component associated with the third dimension, but it also has a component for every dimension as well. Every level, every octave, naturally, there's octaves, 432, 864, 1756, 1728, 3456, y'all get it, I ain't no mathematician, let's go. These grids are geometric, of course, and science will eventually discover that there is a grid for every species in the world. Each of these grids have their own geometry and are unique. There's not another one like it, just as the species itself are unique. These grids give off light as well, and from space they can be seen as the source of the bluish glow around the Earth. <laughs> what Thoth and friends had to do was create a synthetic Christ consciousness grid, uh, allowing humans to ascend to the Christ consciousness in a very short time. Synthetic. But first, let's talk about the science behind the grid. Perhaps you've heard of the 100th monkey experiment. Over a span of 30 years, scientists were researching a species of monkey called Makaka Fuscata on an island in Japan. They were providing the monkeys with sweet potatoes by dropping them in the sand. The monkeys liked sweet potatoes, but they didn't like the sand and dirt so much. A few monkey children figured out that they could wash their sweet potatoes, and some of them taught the technique to their parents. Only a few of the adult monkeys did this, though. This went on for some time, until one day, the monkeys who actually knew the technique hit critical mass. And bingo! The technique started spreading faster than it did before. Monkeys started learning it really easily across all of the Japanese islands nearby as well as on the mainland. They knew that there had to be something that wasn't yet understood about how a species is connected to itself. Listen up. So what did we do? We tried it on humans. Uh -oh. A research team made a picture out of human faces. About a hundred faces hidden within a single picture, but at first glance, you could only see about six or seven. They did several surveys with a few hundred people in Australia and said, all right, find the faces. Most people could only pick out six, seven, eight, nine or so, not many more. After that, the research team went to Britain and aired the picture on a closed cable BBC special that was shown only in England. They showed where all of the faces were, every last one. Half of the research team, which stayed in Australia, did the experiment again with new subjects. And lo and behold, people were just naturally able to see more faces. After this experiment, they knew that something definitely connects us all, and the field of noetics is learning more about it daily. You're already connected, so when they want to disconnect you into the Lucifer experiment, into a duality, they're lying. It's mass consciousness. In Lesson 11, I showed you the three levels of consciousness. Each of these levels have their own consciousness grids around the planet, and our second level half million under the table. Paramount was outraged, and they backed off. Things were silent for about three months. Then, Drunvalo heard from a source again, who was involved in all this, who said that three men shut off the light field and went inside. They found themselves inside a very large building that went on for miles underground, which was really the edge of a giant underground city, which was really just one giant building. Then, a little while later, an Egyptian archaeologist named Larry Hunter began describing the same thing, but more detailed. He said that the city was six and a half by eight miles wide, and twelve stories deep, and the city was outlined by specific temples in Egypt. The three pyramids are lined up with Orion's belt, but there are also small temples for every other star in the constellation. Those temples map out the city underground and are made out of a special stone not found anywhere else in Egypt called Koinon Stone. Hmm. Incredibly enough, very recently, ancient tunnels were found in Romania that led to both Egypt and the inner earth. Hmm. Now, I don't have time to go into detail about this particular story, but if you want, check out the book Transylvanian Sunrise by Radu hmm. Sinemar. To be clear, this is a theory that has not been accepted by the Egyptian government, but the underground city that Thoth said was there is, according to Mr. Hunter, marked by temples made of a unique... Underground city, so if we're getting the same thing in Arizona, then what do you think is underground, and what's the, what do you think is connecting uh, the four corners? What do you think is connecting the four corners to Mexico, to Peru, 
What do you think is connected? And what do you think this Prince Yorio Bay is trying to get you to comprehend about what they comprehend? What do you think their prophet, again, this is a prophet of Moab. Has Israel, has Israel ever had a prophet outside of Israel? Name one prophet that's come to lead Israel that wasn't Israel. So that should let you know this is a prophet for Moab. Again, the inhabitants of Africa. This is a quote from Noble Drew Ali, our descendants of the ancient Canaanites of the land of Canaan. All right. He says, dividing the dividing of the land between the father and the son, the dominion of Cush, northeast and southeast Africa and northwest and southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. Now let's get down to this Moabite, Moabite. The Moabites from the land of Moab who perceived permission Received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa. They were the founders and true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. The Moabites are the true possessors, true possessors of the Moroccan Empire. So if they're calling this Am Morocco, they're saying that the Moabites are colonizing or controlling all of so-called America. All the Americas, all of Atlantis is controlled by Moab. Which is why you see your transfer of transfer of inheritance by Zia S L Bay L for Moabites. Land resources, longitude, latitude. They got the whole, you know, saying around the Connecticut, East Coast, they got their own land here. They own this is just one transfer of inheritance, people. All right, let's take it away with this. Um, unfortunately, such was not the case. It didn't it didn't really take. And so uh, unfortunately, thereafter, you had a downward spiral that occurred, and thus, this is what brought in um, another experiment, mm. one of which was, or proved to be, um, uh, a positive experiment in the creation of the, uh, the ancient pharaoh known as Akhenaten, or some known as Agantan. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, Akhenaten was an immortal being who was created, and uh, for the sole purpose of introducing uh, what is known as Una Mains Consciousness, or One Mind or Unity Consciousness, and uh -huh. it was basically to uh, bring the Moors to another level of consciousness, uh, these Moors in particular, as I said, in Atlantis, who had lost a lot of uh, their memory and the sciences. And so, so it was to raise up their magnetic field to bring them back into a sense of unity. But what are they unifying with? Now let's go into where we were last time. Let's pick up where we were. And uh, yeah, man, we're going to keep it flowing. You know, again, this is a whole two hours, man. So we're going to have a good time with this series because, you know, as we start to swim, the waves become uh, very, uh, very fluid, exactly man. Let's keep flowing. Mike Sedema uh, is basically an underactive uh, thyroid or, or an underactive thyroid gland known as hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, which basically is a poor binding process of iodine to a group of amino acids of a glycoprotein made in the thyroid gland. And these amino acids are tyrosine residues uh, in the thyroglobulin or TGB, which are precursor hormones of thyroxine and triadothyronine T3 and T4. Uh, and uh, this particular iodine deficiency also um, shows itself in blood disorders, um, which again, like I said, this is all a pattern of the acidic uh, dialect of so-called English that we're using. Um, so your language is cursing you because it's developing acid and this acid is killing you. Meanwhile, your tonal language is, he calls it Moabite. You know what I'm saying? He mentioned three or four tonal languages, but he didn't mention Hebrew. He just said, oh, Moabite. All right, so your tonal languages, you know what I'm saying, actually promote, um, you know what I'm saying, your your melanin actually builds your vibration. It builds your magnetic field. It's alkaline. They call it energy alkaline, right? So it promotes your energy, um, you know what I'm saying, instead of the acidic languages like English and Latin and these dead languages. Let's go. And thus is the reason why the European is so insistent on us using uh, this particular dialect that works for him, you know, in his customs, in what he calls law, but is not law, but is actually a custom being imposed upon us, 
Um, but it doesn't really work for us for the simple reason of what I explained earlier about it not being um, a magnetic uh, alkaline based language. Um, and so, as I said, this is also indicative of being linguistically strung out on methadone hydrochloride. Now, what do I, what do I mean by that? When I say methadone hydrochloride, um, in terms of this acidic language that uh, I'm referring to and the poor binding process of iodine, um, I'm basically talking about uh, a form of mathematics. So when we talk about language, we have to consider mathematics, we have to consider uh, the helixography, the DNA and RNA of language, uh, or the genetics of language, um, and a whole host of other things. But, as I said, uh, so when we're talking about mathematics, we're talking about methodology. And so math is meth. Okay, so as a matter of fact, which is the abbreviation or slang for, again, methadone. Uh, so we're talking about a, a corrupt form of mathematics that has been imposed or superimposed on our people. Um, now, I know this may sound kind of strange to some extent because it's like, okay, you started out with Atlantis and you said that it has some relation or correlation to the United States, uh, the United States Corporation, and it does. But all of these things have to be considered, as I said, in terms of cause and effect to see exactly uh, how this played into the dynamic of the Moorish Empire, uh, the ebb and flow of the Moorish Empire from Anatolia uh, to the Crimea, all the way back to the Americas, Latinum, uh, known as Moorish Spain, uh, and other parts of the Moorish Empire. In fact, uh, not to get away from the, uh, the methadone effect, is that, so we're talking about a corruption of language, and we're talking about a corruption of language, we're talking about something which is foreign and therefore barbaric, because barbaric or barbarian means foreign. Um, and so, when we understand it from that particular perspective, then we're looking at those who are on a day-to-day -day basis, meaning the Albion male, uh, of whom again is imposing the acidic electrical or electrically charged dialect uh, upon our people, are, are daily seeking convictions uh, via their court system. And so when you look at the fact that they're constantly seeking convictions of our people, conviction is actually dealing with what? language as well, because when you say something, you say it with conviction, as in the case of someone being convicted by a jury of their so-called peers, they're actually saying it with what? Conviction. And in addition to which is a form of damnation. So they're actually looking to uh, convict you uh, for eternal damnation in the Cretan system. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, the, this is what has played an integral part or integral role in, again, the dynamic of the, uh, the Moorish Empire, particularly in and throughout the United States. So now, when we look at the uh, beginnings of the Moorish um, corporate family trust, known as the United States, or more commonly known as the United States, it's important to understand that it was not originally known as the United States uh, in 1774. That is what has become a common appellative. Um, but if you do any research and you look at the uh, the Ananes Continens, the Ananes Continens is the continental records, which prior to that was known as um, the Ananes Imperium, which was the imperial records. And now in the imperial, in imperial records, you have what is known as the Consociuimos Regnum. The Consociuimos Regnum was a consolidation or a convocation of 13 royal families. Those royal families were Moorish families uh, that basically consolidated their power for a number of reasons, which I'll go into, uh, in forming this uh, corporate family trust again, as I said, that we call the United States Corporation.
13 Moorish families. So you have the 13 colonies. The originally was these 13 Moorish families. Moors from Mars. Hijacking these Lemurians or these people that are already indigenous here. With their male pyramid energy. What's going on? Moors from Mars. Let's get that last part back. Families were Moorish families. Uh, that basically consolidated their power for a number of reasons, which I'll go into, uh, in forming this uh, corporate family trust, again, as I said, that we call the United States Corporation. Corporate family trust, so it's co their consolidation to form their empire here, to form their West Morocco here, while still having allegiance to their Morocco there and the Sultan there. And now you have the 13 families setting up their invasion on you here. But who was here? Whose inheritance is this? Because if it's your land, you don't do deals for it and transfer inheritance and make treaties again. If somebody kicks down your front door, are you going to make a treaty for your house? Are you going to say, excuse me, invader, you sick motherfucker, you diseased motherfucker? Uh, can I make a treaty for my bedroom? Can we transfer the inheritance of all of my shit to my bedroom? Is that cool with you? Would you trust yourself living in a house with the invader when the invader takes all your house and leaves you with a bedroom? No. Common sense. Rocking with the creator. Pure water says, man, if you're going to take my house, you're going to have to take us all. and We got to go out like this. I'm not going to live with no invader. Only if it's not your house do you make a treaty for it. Only if it's not your house do you say, yo, 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 invader. I've been trying to get this house for a minute. I've been trying to take down Preston John King David, the Israelites, for a minute. Moab's been going to war with the Hebrews for a with the Israel with the sons of Jacob for a minute, with the tribe of Jacob for a minute. So, yeah, let's make a little deal. Let me, let me get that bedroom about you. I'll let you get all that, but let me get this, this, and that. And then they got hijacked. And then this Moroccan constitution got hijacked by the invader, by the so-called, by, by the other invader. But what's the proxy? They set up, you know what I'm saying? They put you in captivity on your own land, your own soil. Dr. King had a dream and told you that. The Negro finds himself in captivity on his own land. And then they set up so-called white slave masters over you. But who was owning the plantation? Yeah, it was your land, but who was owning it now? And who did they set up as managers? This is sciences, man. This is sciences. So you have multiple invaders, multiple invasions. Oh, now we all just, we all more. We're all great. We're all more. We're all great. 